Hey y'all, I am sitting it on the front porch. Feels good, nice and shady. It's actually pretty warm today. It's gonna be up into the upper 80s. We're actually gonna do a quick project before we head out to one of my son's baseball scrimmages. We have that today, you know, just a regular weekend. <laughs> I love baseball, I love baseball season. Um, <clears throat> I'm pretty loud vocal fan <laughs> from the stands. I enjoy sports a lot and I enjoy watching my kids play. But anyway, okay, so today what we're going to be concentrating on is how I deal with pests and disease within the garden. I'm going to show you guys some of the products um, that I like to utilize. I'm going to show you guys some of the issues that I have going on in the garden. Y'all know that I like to be really upfront that things are not perfect here in my garden. I mess up all the time. I kill things all the time. And I definitely have pests and disease in my garden. So I'm going to show you how I deal with that. Now, I do want to preface this with saying that everybody has their own thoughts on how to deal with pests and disease within their own garden, whether it's organic, non-organic, chemical, uh, homeopathic, whatever. Everybody has their own thoughts on how to do all that kind of stuff. And you should absolutely do what's best for you and your garden and your family. I have tons of suggestions, but just because it works for me does not mean it's the best choice for you. So keep that in mind as people drop comments on what they choose to do in their garden below. No need to go after anybody. We'll just all take care of ourselves and what works best for our garden. So let's get started. Okay, so as y'all know, Jeff's been helping me out on a lot of stuff um, since my surgery. So what he is looking over here, right here, as y'all remember, we do have um, borers in our willow. And so this is a treatment we're going to be utilizing, annual tree and shrub insect control with bonide. That's really important. And this is for killing borers and miners. The thought is that you apply an application at the base of the tree. The tree soaks it up into its bark and then the boars, when they eat it, chew on or interact with it, they die. And we should be able to apply this once a year. Um, and then utilizing that, we'll have to stay on top of it. Once your tree is head borers, you really need to stay um, on top of it after that. So Jeff is just going over how he's going to be applying that. So in the meantime, let me talk to you and show you some of the other things that we deal with. Okay, here's one of my more recent pest issues. Um, these are cabbage worms um, and they are attacking the kale. Now, they are dead right now. I just applied one of my favorite um, ways to deal with pests and this is Captain Jack's Insecticidal Super Soap. Now, I know it's way less expensive to mix it yourself, but I am not someone who follows through with mixing things yourself. So yes, I buy it in the container definitely pay more to do this, but I definitely pay for the convenience of having that. So I literally just applied that and all of these suckers, they are gone and dead. Now, typically I don't mess with these a lot unless they really start to destroy my plants. And you can see that this happened just over two days. They really went after it on the plant. And so I decided to do something about it. A lot of times I'll just live with pests. They don't typically bother me all that much, but when it gets to the point where they're actually killing a plant, that's a problem. So you can see these have been treated and all of these little guys are gone and done with. And hopefully the plant will re, uh, rebound after this. Okay, going back to the insecticidal soap, I get to utilize this for a number of things. We use it for uh, spider mites. So this uh, spruce, a uh, dwarf Alberta spruce right here has some serious, spider mite damage and you guys can see it see all those brown leaves oh my gosh okay and the thing about um a spruce or an evergreen like this is they don't reproduce a new set of you know leaves every year so <laughs> this guy might not make it i might have got to him too late i didn't notice until later into the spring basically the way i treat this is i start with a really strong stream of water to knock off as many spider mites as possible and then i come back and I apply the insecticidal super soap to it. I leave that on for about a day and then I come and wash it all off again. And um, a strong stream of water really helps a lot with spider mites. This infestation is um, affecting about 50% of this shrub. So I might end up utilizing this shrub. However, I'm sorry I'm so stiffy today, you guys have allergies. The front of it looks still pretty good. So I'm gonna give it some time see how it does but it might end up succumbing to the spider mites we'll have to see 
Look at all that damage. We do have all the new stuff coming up. Whereas like, just to give you a comparison, that's what that one looks like, the infected one, or infested one, I should say. And over here is the same exact variety, literally six feet from each other. And you can see the vast difference. You can see the green all the way back into the back part of the tree looking really good. I don't see any kind of spider mite damage on this one. So we'll be keeping an eye on that, but I am treating it with the insecticidal soap. Okay, let me show you one other one that I'm dealing with over here. Hey, how are y'all? On the Ruby Falls Redbud, right back over here, I am dealing with some type of scale. I have already treated it, but I was out here the other day. Let me sneeze. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. I was out here the other day and I started noticing some of this up underneath the branches. And you can see that scale, and um, which is common for um, Ruby Falls Redbud. You can see those little guys right there. Okay. Um, got some over here. So I have been treating this with insecticidal soap. Um, it's not everywhere, it's just on a few branches. And so I will keep that up. You guys can see it's all on the underside of the branches. So it's not overly noticeable unless you're someone like me who observes their plants on a daily basis. So I am treating that also with the insecticidal super soap and hopefully I'll have really good results with that. Okay, I'm not currently dealing with any kind of powdery mildew, black spot, anything like that, but I did wanna show you that I keep this on hand as well. So as soon as I see something like that, I can deal with it. It's Captain Jack's Copper Fungicide, ready to use. It has bonite in it, and it controls a lot of different things. But powdery mildew and black spot are the things I deal with most in my garden. Black spot on my roses, powdery mildew on several different things. And so I like to have this on hand, pre-mixed, ready to go, so I can treat it as soon as I see it show up. Okay, you guys, so I've got Jeff in the back here. We are going to utilize this cup right here. It's actually from my surgery, y'all. <laughs> but it's so small, it doesn't hold very much water. So it is now going to be an official gardening cup, and it measures ounces, which is what we need. So based on the um, diameter of our tree trunk and the size of our tree, we need 20 ounces of the tree and shrub um, treatment to go into the bucket, and we're going to add one gallon of water with that. Does that sound right, good, babe? Yes. Okay. All right. So go ahead and let's measure that out. Just fill it all the way up. And this is obviously enough for multiple treatments, which will be really good. It's, it's one treatment. Huh? It's one. No, the container oh, is it's multiple. Oh. All right. So go ahead and pour that in, and then we're going to go fill it up with water. Okay, so I forgot to press record when Jeff was applying it. So basically what he did is starting at the base and he poured out the water um, or the mixture starting at the base out about two feet all the way around the circumference. So starting at the base and pouring little dribbles of the treatment out in a radius all the way around the tree. And that is how you apply the application. Now we are going to bring the puppy dogs inside because knowing Buffy, she'll get right up in the business of that. So we are going to do that until this is fully soaked in. Another treatment I read about that's an all natural treatment is planting a bunch of garlic around the base of your willow tree as garlic is a natural deterrent for borers. So we, I probably will do that as well. Now this will not be garlic that we eat because now I've obviously treated the tree with chemicals and, but I don't mind just allowing garlic to grow and expand here so as to potentially stop borers and maybe we have to do less treatments in the future. Um, but let's go up front and let me show you one other issue we're dealing with that has to do not necessarily with disease or pest, but with uh, freeze damage. Okay, before we go in the back, can we just appreciate what's going on over here? Look at that sweet William. I've got Nigella coming up right there. Look at the yellow roses back here. These are called Lucky and Love. Absolutely stunning. 
yellow roses. This is my second year for this rose and it is so happy right in this spot. I've got some flocks coming up there, bachelor's buttons. It's one of my new roses called America. It's a climbing rose, really pretty coral pink. It's already tripled in height since I got it. Loving it. Okay, let's go to the front. Okay, let me show you what's going on out here. This right here is an Autumn Blaze maple that I got for my 40th birthday. My parents got this for me. This is its second winter here with us. And this winter was really dry. Um, we had a lot of really hard freezes and a lot of really warm temperature. So this is the damage we're looking at. And um, basically I did some research on it. This is all as a result of a dry winter and exactly what I was saying, um, big flux in temperatures and freeze damage. And then there is um, some fungus growing in basically the areas that are damaged. Now, maple bark is really, really thin. So the goal is not to peel it away. So what we're gonna do is clean up the bottom. We're gonna um, brush off most of the fungus right here. We're going to apply that copper fungicide. You saw over here, the Captain Jack's copper fungicide. We're gonna apply that. And then what we're going to do is um, we're going to apply a tree wrap to the bark. So we're gonna, this was called Tangle Guard Banding Material for Trees. Um, it, it can be, it, it says that you can be used with other products. I ordered this on Amazon. Basically, um, it's gonna help um, sun scald because basically the inside of the tree is showing and when the sun hits, that's gonna cause some problems, okay? Um, so basically what we're gonna do is apply this um, wrap all the way around, overlapping it as we go up, and we're gonna leave this on here for a month or two. After a month or two, we're gonna remove it, see how everything's going, and decide if we wanna apply another layer of wrap back on. In the future, for each um, winter, we will, from now on, on our maples, we will apply um, this wrap. Just because our winters have been so inconsistent, we don't wanna deal with this damage year after year. So by applying this um, wrap when winter comes around, this will help um, the bark maintain healthy and keep it from splitting from the truck. So let's take care of business. Obviously, I'm gonna wash my hands real good after this, you guys. I'm gonna pull off a bunch of this fungus. I don't wanna pull away the bark. Everything I read specifically said don't pull away the bark. Just get the fungus off as best you can and then apply the wrap. I'm gonna leave all the bark on. Literally, it said one of the worst things you can do is pull off the bark. So Jeff is gonna trim the bottom here. This is an absolutely beautiful tree. Autumn Blaze Maple, if you've never seen one. I'll drop a photo so you can see what this looks like in the fall. Absolutely beautiful. And you can see we have damage all the way down to the base. Okay, so I'm gonna get Jeff to hold the camera while I apply the spray and then we'll get the tree wrap on. the trunk and wrap up so start here wrap up and that we're supposed to overlap the wrap as we're going and then at the very end secure it with like some twine or masking tape or something that will decompose naturally so I'm gonna apply it a little tight not ridiculously tight but I am trying to press the bark back into place so that basically, you know, almost like a flap of skin, the tree has an opportunity to heal itself. This is going on really easily. I will say y'all, I'll drop a link 
the Amazon link below to where what this product is in case this is something that you're dealing with as well. This isn't an end all. I mean, this tree, hopefully from now on, now that we've discovered that this is something that has an issue with, we continue to deal with it over the years. This tree should be fine. It should be wonderful. So, okay. All right. Want to get some kind of tape to apply or twine? Sure. Yep. Okay, so I've got just natural twine. And basically what I'm gonna do is I cut myself a length. I'm gonna wrap around multiple times and then give it a good knot right here. And that should hold the tape in place for now. All right. Allergies, you guys. <laughs> Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. A little bit of a different situation. I didn't necessarily talk about flowers, um, but I did talk a lot about what kinds of things I use to treat in my yard. As before, I just want to be really upfront. If these things don't work for you and you don't want to use these in your garden, that's okay. Do exactly what works for you. You know, um, everybody has a different experience. Every day, but everybody has a different outlook regarding organic versus non-organic and things along those lines. So do whatever works best for your garden. If you have some remedies that work great in your garden, be sure to drop them below. Let me know what's up. Let me know how I can better help out my garden. As always, she's a mad gardener or decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.